Hello and welcome back to Exceptional Explorers. Uh, last time you guys saw me, I talked to you about yoga. And I was thinking for my next video to talk about fine motor skills and really fine motor development. But the more I thought about it, I really felt strongly that I decided to really talk more about the sensory system. Since when I did mention yoga and yoga um, benefits, I spoke a lot about sensory and proprioceptive input and all of that. And the truth is, it really is difficult to get kids to have good fine motor and gross motor development without a regulated sensory system. So I figured we'll start there. I think it really has, sensory has become this big buzzword um, and it should, right? Because if we don't have a dysregulated sensory system, we can't function, right? We hear that word a lot when we talk about people um, who do have autism or sensory processing disorder, but in all, you know, truth is, in all seriousness, all, every single person has sensory needs. And if those needs are not met, we don't feel well, right? So I'm gonna give you guys a scenario and you picture it with me. Let's think back to be pre-pandemic times. Um, maybe you are somebody who worked in New York City and had to commute to home and back, work home, right? So you took mass transit. It took you about an hour and a half to get to work. You spent that hour and a half sitting really close to people with different smells maybe, right? You're wearing a lot of clothes, maybe the, the tag in your back is a little itchy, but you're able to handle all of that, right? You get to work, you have more stressors, right? Maybe your socks are on like a certain way and they're rubbing the back of your foot and you feel like un you feel uncomfortable. Again, it's fine, right? We haven't reached our threshold. This accumulates throughout the day. Now you're on your commute back home, you get home, and you're, maybe you're irritable, right? Maybe you're hungry. Maybe the noise on the train was a lot for you. Now you have a headache, right? And you're fatigued, you're exhausted, you worked all day, you're tired, your day's far from over, right? You probably have kids and another shift waiting for you at home. So these are all ways that our environment and our sensory response to that environment has to be in sync so that we can function and handle the annoyances and the difficulties and the stressors that come our way throughout the day. So and now imagine a child, and this could be any, any child or any person, right? Any child who may or may not have a sensory processing disorder, right? They woke up in the morning at the wrong sleep cycle. We woke, we woke them up, they had to get ready for school. They're in a deep sleep and you woke them up at the wrong cycle, they're already cranky. And now we gotta brush their teeth, right? And of course it has to be an electric toothbrush because nobody wants cavities, right? I'm being sarcastic, but you know, that's, they're being kind of jolted. And then next thing you know, they're picking out what to wear and maybe the sweater is too tight. And then they're having breakfast and the cereal is cold. And it's a lot of sensory information, right? So maybe, this is enough like it is for my child. This kind of scenario would 100% result in a meltdown before we even left the house in the morning. Some kids, they're a lot more agreeable. They, they can tolerate those small but accumulative sensory demands, right? So the question is like, how, how do I regulate, help myself regulate? How do I help my child regulate in terms of sensory development and sensory needs? Unfortunately, that is not an easy answer and that answer will be different for everybody. So a good therapist or any good occupational therapist will definitely do a thorough evaluation and see does that what sensory needs that child or that person has. And that includes figuring out is that person seeking input, meaning do they need more 
sensory information to help regulate their body? Or are they avoiding sensory information? They need less of it in order not to get agitated and irritated and overstimulated. So through this video, you're definitely not, not going to get the answers to those questions because that's all very unique, right? And we just don't know, right? I don't, I don't know any of your kids and I don't know what their needs are. And frankly, you know, having my own children, their needs change on a daily basis. So some days they need one thing, another day they need another thing, just like we do. Some days we really want to go do a workout and unwind, and some days we just want to take a bubble bath and unwind, right? We're fluid, we're complicated, and the same thing goes for children and their sensory needs and their sensory system. So that being said, I do want to share with you some of my all-time favorite um, activities, sensory activities that will not, they're not certain to work for everyone. And it doesn't mean that this is something that your child craves and needs, but it's something that might be worth a, tr a try um, to add in throughout their day to promote a calming effect. So some of my, one of my favorite activities that I like to introduce to young children, especially when they're no longer really mouthing objects as much, um, so if you know that your child will definitely put this in your mouth, definitely hold off. Um, or, but if they're able to understand, don't put it in your mouth or, you know, this is not for eating. Ooh, shaving cream play is great. Letters, circles, um, shapes, numbers, and shaving cream is extremely calming. It provides great tactile input and it's very soothing and it's just fun to play with. And, you know, it's fun. It occupies them for several minutes. For children who, you know, you're afraid that they might definitely eat it because it looks like whipped cream and it, frankly, it looks delicious, right? Um, you can put that um, shaving cream into a Ziploc bag and seal it up tight so they don't open it and have them kind of push it around, maybe put some beads in there so they can, you know, push the beads around to give it an extra sensory experience. Um, sensory bins, I'm sure you've seen them all over the internet. They really are great and they're easy. You could do them with all sorts of things. And just the project of getting this all together is fun for the kids. Like getting the bin, maybe you could decorate the bin, peeling the stickers. There's your fine motor task, right? Right now, there's tons of snow right now. The snow might be getting dirty, but if you have some clean snow in your yard, you could put snow in there. Um, a scooper, um, maybe some twigs. There you have it. There's your sensory bin just for the, just for that moment until the snow starts to melt and it gets all wet and, you know, kind of messy, but that's okay, right? Me kids need messy play. When people say messy play, that's what they mean. They mean sensory based and play that provides you that input, right? Also, the cold snow is definitely a great sensation, especially for kids who might be more sensitive. They might get distracted that it's such a cool thing that they're doing. And here you are, they're playing with snow. Even some kids I know who, who have kind of sensory avoidance, they don't like to play in the snow. My own daughter was like this for a long time. She did not like to play in the snow. So this might be great for those kids who are kind of nervous, you know, for the cold. You can give them just, a, you can bring the snow to them in a small amount so it's not as overwhelming. And it is, it's scary. I mean, think about it. They're little, their bodies are small and we're like, come on, let's have fun in the snow. It's a little jarring to the, to the system, right? So if you have a child who's definitely kind of taken aback by the huge snowstorm that we just got. First of all, I'm with you. This is a, a little bit too much for me too, but bring the snow to them in a small container. That's a great sensory experience. I know that a lot of kids, I, I would say, I, I would like, I'll generalize here, which I don't like to do. Most kids do have a moment in the afternoon where they're kind of, they're tired, but they've maybe, they haven't gotten enough physical activity and they're kind of, you know, witch hour. Grown kids get witch hour too, not just babies. And you know, the, that, that time, maybe right before dinner or slightly after dinner, they start bouncing off the walls and you're like, how am I going to get these kids down for bedtime? And you're, it just feels like they're running away from you. Um, I, I like to implement something like burrito time. You can take the cushions off the couch and squeeze the kids like a burrito. Definitely, especially on the larger joints, it's called deep pressure. Um, maybe even a little massage by the jaw area. It's soothing, it's calming. Um, listen, some kids might love it and get riled up from it. I don't, again, I don't know your child, I don't know your child's sensory needs, but if you make it as part of a, of a like your cool down nighttime activity, it really could be a nice little tool in your toolbox to 
get the kids grounded, get the kids first, you know, together. You can do that deep pressure with the cushions and then read a book to the kids, right? And then they're already with you, they're together, you're not chasing after them. Um, another activity that I really like, and again, it's messy, but slime is really fun. You're following directions, right? You're putting your hands into a kind of like a cold and gooey texture. And kids, just a lot of kids, not all kids, but a lot of kids like slime. Some kids hate it, don't push it. But if your kid, something that your kid might like, it might be fun for them, especially if they know how to do it, to come up and teach the task to the family. They could be like the leader, the slime leader for the day. Definitely really, really fun. Um, another um, tool that I like to have at home, or not a tool, but another item that I like to have is, is kinetic sand. There are actually recipes for how to make your own. I've never done that. I did. I have purchased. It is. It gets kind of pricey, but you know. Again, it's one. It's a great summer or spring activity that you can do outside and stick things in there to hide, like little beads or um, little like small discs or um, even beans that you could pick out with tweezers to make it a fine motor activity. So here you have both the motor and the sensory piece, which is great. My favorite um, thing to use are water beads. They're gooey, they're fun to, to watch as they kind of expand. You could do it outside for hours and kids love to pop them, you know, so actually it's great. It's a great pressure activity because they have to figure out how much pressure they need to apply to pop it. So you can maybe make a game like who can push as hard as they can but not pop the, the bead, right? So they have to kind of figure out how to grade their pressure, which is very important because we need to grade our pressure all the time when we're writing. We put too much pressure, our hands start to hurt, right? So all of these little activities, they do serve a purpose and a benefit. Um, when, I, when I talked about yoga last week, I talked a lot about proprioception and that's really, um, you can get, you can achieve that through heavy work. So personally, I love um, push-ups, and maybe even rearranging furniture, right? That's a great, great sensory activity. So if you have anything that you see moved around the house, ask your kids to join in and help you because they'll feel like they're being helpful and they'll also get a really good sensory um, activity from that. So any shoveling is a great activity for kids right now if you're thinking of things to do right now. Um, even wool push-ups, right? Which is, they're really, really great. Um, if you're looking for like movement activities, if you feel if you feel like your kid need a lot of movement, so it really is a good idea to couple your heavy work with your movement tasks. So like, you know, that includes like, imagine if you're an adult and you were doing an exercise and you're flipping tires, right? Obviously, we're not going to have small children have small children flipping tires, but if you think about that, um, any objects in the house that you feel safe having them move with you, maybe a light ottoman or a chair um, those are great great ways to get to get to give kids that sensory input that they really crave and need especially right now during a pandemic when we're home a lot more and activities are just harder to come by um, if any of these make sense to you if any of these are activities that you've done at home that you feel have worked for you if you decided to try something interesting that's that you love please share it with us and let us know so we can tell other parents and spread the wealth of knowledge. It really does take a village and we'd love to see any sensory activities that you like to try and do with your kiddos. So don't be shy, drop us a line, let us know, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in to Exceptional Explorers channel. Bye.